So this video is kind of as a thank you for everybody watching my video and finally getting it to a million views, which is amazing. Genuinely never thought that would happen, so it's a very surreal moment when I saw it had a million views. Um, so today I'm going to give you a couple of little secrets on basically how to get closer to that Eric Johnson tone that we all know and love. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the delay. Now there are a couple of videos online already going into this sort of thing. Pete Thorne did an amazing one on how to get the uh, Eddie Van Halen Echoplex kind of slap back thing. And that was great. Um, and this is kind of like a similar concept. So standard practice is to put your delay in the effects loop of your amp. So that means you've got all the distortion happening first and then you've got the delay happening after that. So it's kind of, it's repeating the notes that are already distorted rather than repeating into a distortion, if that makes sense. Um, so now I've got a Echoflex emulation on my Line 6 HX Stomp. Um, now I've turned the mix up a little bit because when it's after the amp, you need more effect for it to be audible. Whereas as you'll see in a minute, we can get away with a much lower mix. So this is the mix on about 30% and this is in the effects loop. <laughs> So you can hear that echo kind of like nice and clear in the in the background, but it still uh, kind of fills that space. And what Eric does when Eric plays quite a lot of notes in a short space of time, when he plays a fast lift, like you can hear that echo starts to get a little bit muddy. So what Eric does is he puts it before all of the distortion happens. So I've got the Echoplex preamp going into the Echoplex because the Echoplex doesn't have the preamp within it, you have to add it separately. Um, then I've got, he uses a tube driver, but I've got a Maxon SD9, because for me that sounds a little bit closer on the, on the Line 6 Helix uh, models than the, it's called the Valve driver on the Helix, but Sounds a bit closer than that to Eric's tone. And then, um, so if I go on to the setting where it's got the echo before all the gain, you get this. Let me turn the reverb off and you can hear what's actually going on there. So I've turned off the reverb. So you can hear there, when I stopped playing, the delay's got noticeably cleaner with every repeat. And what that means when you're playing fast stuff is, the echoes only come in when you stop playing. So if I was to play the same sort of lick, you don't really hear the echo until I stop playing. And then if I put the reverb back on, again with the low mix, so the reverb is only just there so you can hear it, and now because I put the echo before the gain, I've actually only got it mixed into 12%. And even then it might be a little bit much. Um, so as I said, on the previous example, we were working with 30%. So that's roughly three times the amount of delay mix that we have. Every, everything else is set the same. So it really helps to kind of clean up those faster passages because you haven't got delay on literally every note that ends up muddying it all together. So if I play a lick like... You can still hear it, it's having some kind of width, but uh, it's a lot more defined and it's not as kind of swampy as playing with delay after the amp. So obviously you're gonna need a way to have a designated delay 
for before the overdrive and after the overdrive if you want both those sounds. Um, but this is why I love using the HX Stomp because it's a tiny little, um, tiny little solution really and I can go from that sound and then pressing one button, so if I go... So that's my clean sound, and then my kind of dirty rhythm. So again, there's a, there's a slightly different delay setting on this one. So it's not as gainy as the lead sound, but it's gainier than the clean sound. So you have to kind of adjust it accordingly. And then the all out lead sound. So yeah, being able to kind of mix between different delay settings really does help. Now the other trick um, that you can only really do if you have a separate signal chain for your lead and rhythm sounds and your clean sound obviously um, so before I give you this next bit of information I need to give massive massive props to John Cawley who's another guitarist you can find on YouTube he's got a great channel dedicated to getting uh, great sounds out of modelers um, and his preset for the HX Stomp the, uh, I think it's called Eric Lead was a massive uh, inspiration for this. I've kind of started there and tweaked it a little bit to get it to kind of work best for me. Um, so yeah, go and check out his YouTube channel. He's massive inspiration, great player. Um, so yeah, here's tip number two. So I've got here a Maxon SD9, which is a really nice sounding overdrive distortion, kind of fuzzy thing. Um, but, so I've got the gain actually set really low and the tone set pretty low to kind of mimic um, how Eric uses the tube driver. But, the level is set below unity gain and I've only just worked out why this is. So if I turn this off, this overdrive, uh, distortion pedal, the sound is now louder. But it doesn't have the same sustain. Now, if I turn it back on, you'll notice this sound is a bit more squished and a bit uh, quieter, but it sounds more kind of leady because it's got that sustain back. A is clearly the key of, of today's, today's video. Um, but what I notice when turning the level up is you get more pick attack, which is what we're trying not to get too much of in this Eric tone. So let's just have a little look. If I turn it up, I'm gonna, the level was on about 11 o'clock. So now I'm gonna turn it up three quarters of the way. <laughs> The delays are kind of getting in the way that bit more and so it's actually kind of making it a bit less clear even though we're giving it more level so the reason Eric kind of brings the level down before hitting his Marshall is to smooth out that pick attack and give you a nice kind of thick sound because of course if you're playing a single chord guitar it's quite a wiry sound anyway so you're gonna to want to get every bit of thickness that you can without uh, sacrificing clarity. So you can hear that with the level just slightly below unity gain but adding in some more distortion it kind of merges together with the amp and then you get what to my ears sounds like is quite an Eric Johnson sounding tone. Alright guys hopefully that was useful let me know how you're getting on with putting your sound together um, and let me know if any of these tricks helped you. Cool, I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.